Okay, now we're on um, number six from the 2021 AP exam, uh, the first administration. As usual, if I have any mistakes or corrections I need to point out, I will put them in the description below. So the function g has derivatives of all orders for all real numbers. The Maclaurin series for g is given by this on its interval of convergence. State the conditions necessary to use the integral test to determine the convergence of this series and use the integral test to show that this converges. Okay, the conditions are that um, 1 over e to the n has to be uh, a positive and 1 over e to the n has to be decreasing. Okay, so um, this is automatically true and then this is decreasing because this is a geometric series so that one is true also. I don't know if you, it's just state the conditions. Does it prove the conditions? I'm just gonna state them. Use the integral test to show that it converges. So instead we're gonna do the integral from zero to uh, infinity of one over e to the x dx. You make the bounds the same as the bounds of your sum there which is really the integral 0 to infinity e to the negative x dx, which we really write as the limit as c goes to infinity, the integral from 0 to c e to the negative x dx, right? So I make a little side problem to do that integral so I don't have to really write the c all the time. This is negative e to the negative x from 0 to c, which is negative e to the negative c minus negative e to the 0, which becomes that's e to the 0 is 1, and that's plus 1, so it's 1 minus e to the minus c. So here, you're going to take the limit as c goes to infinity of 1 minus e to the minus c. And when, c, when the exponent goes to negative infinity, this goes to 0, so this goes to 1. Because this 1 is, you know, this, this converges, this is a convergent value, therefore the series converges. Use the limit comparison test with 1 over e to the n to show that this series converges absolutely. So to converge absolutely, we have to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of, um, so well, we want to look at the absolute value of this series. So we're going to just basically strip that out. We're going to, we're going to look at this series divided by 1 over e to the n. And we want to know if this value is somewhere between uh, it can't be zero, can't be infinity. If it's somewhere between zero and infinity, then we know that both series converge or diverge. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, so we're gonna uh, multiply by the reciprocal. So this is gonna be e to the n over two e to the n plus three. When you plug in, uh, there's a lot of ways you can do this, but um, I can. Div um, one way is to say if you plug in infinity, you get infinity over infinity. So you can use L'Hopital's rules if you want. So you get e to the n. Derivative of this is just 2e to the n. Then those cancel, and so you get 1 half. So 1 half is between 0 and infinity. So that means both series converge or diverge. Uh, but we know that 1 over e to the n converges. So then the other series also converges. Okay, and converse absolutely because I did the absolute uh, I did the absolute value. I stripped out the negative one. I didn't run an alternating series or anything like that. Okay, that's the limit comparison test. Determine the radius of convergence for the Maclaurin series. So the radius of convergence is we have to look at... Um, so now we're looking at this series here. So if we look at, I'm just going to rewrite the sum as uh, negative 1 to the n x to the n over 2e to the n plus 3. Um, so here what we want to do is we want to do a ratio test. Limit as n goes to infinity a of n plus 1 over a of n. Um, absolute value of this. So we're going to limit n goes to infinity. So this is a ratio test. You're going to do um, so the, when you do the absolute value it just strips out that part. That part isn't necessary. So this is x to the n plus 1 over 2e to the n plus 1 plus 3 and then here 
you divide it by it with e to the n or multiply by the reciprocal, which is e to the yeah, e to the n. Okay, then we do some canceling. This is gonna cancel with all of that. And then you're just left with um, the limit as n goes to infinity. Uh, let me let's leave the absolute values in there. So this becomes uh, I can pull out the x because the x doesn't matter in terms of um, uh, it doesn't doesn't I can just factor that out. So it's two e to the n plus three over two e to the n plus one plus three. I can pull out the absolute value of x because it doesn't depend on n. And these absolute values don't matter because this this is all positive. So this is two e to the n plus three over two e e to the n e plus three because I can just write that out and so basically the e to the n dominates you could use L'Hopital's rule again like I did I'm not gonna use L'Hopital's rule here I'm just gonna say like this one doesn't matter this one doesn't matter because the n goes to infinity these are way bigger then the e to the n's can cancel and then the twos cancel you get one over e or actually so it becomes the absolute value of one over e um yeah I think that looks good and for the radius of convergence, or for the, the ratio test for it to definitely converge, this has to be less than 1. That means absolute value of x is less than 1 over e. And so this is our radius of convergence right there. Because basically x is going to be between 1 over e or negative 1 over e. Okay, the first two terms of the series are used to approximate g of 1. Use the alternating series error bound to determine the upper bound on the error of the approximation. So if we look at the first two term series, the third term tells you what the upper error on the, the, the bound is because you're doing term zero. So let's, let's write out the term. So you're gonna plug in n equals zero. This is gonna be negative one to the zero over two e to the zero plus three, and then negative one to the one over two e to the one plus three, and then negative one to the squared over 2e squared plus 3 and this guy if you're going to use these two terms this one is the error bound without the negative 1 squared so your error is less than or equal to 1 over 2e squared plus 3 and that is an upper bound so the upper bound on the error of the approximation determine the upper bound yeah this is the upper bound of the error on the approximation for an alternating series okay